again and again oh praise God hallelujah amen uh, as our sister Mimi is coming to bless us uh, yeah you can come yeah we will not sing anything uh, to save some time hallelujah it's so nice to be here it's wonderful hallelujah may God bless you
hallelujah as we rise up to our feet we just want to say oh yes oh yes i am a child of the king hallelujah. give us key e praise god
that didn't need to be whipped. There was one that had his chest out and walked boastful. There was one that walked, hallelujah, and didn't fear any situation and didn't fear any problem because he realized I'm a child of the king. Brother, sister, in these meetings, as they are finishing, I want you to go out with your chest out. I want you to go out. Uh, let, let's, let's practice. I want some people that walk with their chest out. I'm a child of the king. I walk around, man. Walk around and say, I'm a child of the king. Hallelujah. His royal blood, it flows within me. Oh, glory be to God. Hallelujah. Brother, sister, I cannot be the same again. After these meetings, I cannot be the same again. Tell your neighbor, I cannot be the same again. Something within me that was lying dormant has been awakened. Something woke up and realized that I'm a child of the king. Oh, glory be to God. Amen. Let's just bow our heads for a word of prayer. Almighty God. Oh, yes. We are, a child, we are children of the king. Lord, your royal blood, it flows within us. Lord, Heavenly Father, from the start of the meetings, Father, something arose within us. We realized who we are. Oh, Lord, we realize that we are sons and daughters of God. Father, we realize that, Lord, when you spoke and said, let there be light, we were with you, Lord Jesus. Lord, Heavenly Father, when you did all the creation, we were with you. But, Lord, we know sin came in between. But, Lord, Heavenly Father, you came to redeem us once more for us to realize who we are. And, Lord, this Easter, we have been awakened. This Easter, we have now realized it is our day. This is our time. This is our season. We are now the sons of God. Now are we the sons of God. Lord Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord Jesus, for your servant that you have sent this way. Oh Lord, what a blessing these meetings were, oh God. Lord Heavenly Father, we don't want them to end. But Lord, we know that we are still have to do other things here. But Lord, you have tremendously blessed us. We thank you for your visitations. We thank you, Lord, for your blessings. We thank you, Father, for your deliverances. We thank you, Lord, for your healings. We thank you, Lord, for the restorations that have taken place. We thank you, Lord, for the supernaturals that have taken place. And Lord, may we continue to live in the realm of the supernatural. May we continue to live in that atmosphere of the supernatural. Oh Lord, we thank you. Lord, may you put some more strength in your servant. Father, may you bless him. Bless his ministry. Bless his church. City Tabernacle. Bless all his outreaches. All his other churches. Oh God. Father, may you continue to enlarge his ministry. May you continue to enlarge his coast. May you continue, Lord, to open doors. May he continue, Lord, to scale in height, oh God, beyond the beyond. Lord, Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord Jesus, for what you've done for us during this Easter. More so, Lord, it was our first Easter meeting. And Lord, you visited us in a mighty special way. Father, we give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. We say worthy is the Lamb of God. Father, we thank you for all that has taken place. And we thank you, Lord, for the services that we have done so far. And we also thank you in advance for this last meeting. Father, may you bless your children. All the efforts that they've put for these meetings to be a success. May you bless each and every one of them. Lord Heavenly Father, may the Easter blessing 
be upon them, O oh God. Father, we thank you and we commend all unto thee. In the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we pray. And all the church shall say, Amen. You may be seated. Oh my. What a blessing it's been. Amen. I have been thoroughly blessed. I believe you've been thoroughly blessed. Amen. Hallelujah. We just want to appreciate our Pastor Nguenya here. Our Pastor Dr. Nguenya. Just give him a clap offering and say, We love you, Pastor. We appreciate you for your sacrifices. He could have been preaching in America. He could have been preaching in Nigeria. Pastor Chitsinde had Easter meetings. He was also invited there. But he said, I am engaged in Bucks Fellowship. <laughs> Amen. We really appreciate him. He could have gone to bigger audiences. But he says, I will come to Bucks. So I was saying, Pastor, what do we do if we want you next year Easter again? You know, when you're with a man, you have to do everything to make him happy and so forth. So you have to look for that opportunity. Amen. And make sure you are striking whilst the atmosphere is still right. So he says, ah, no problem. I can still be there next Easter. Amen. So we have already booked him. The hall is already booked. Same, I, I, I can't, I, I'll just say same time. But I can't say same building. Because God might have given us a building. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I don't want to limit God and say same time, same place. Uh -uh. Same time, same season. But we could be having another building. Brother, all things are possible. All things are possible. You must be a man of faith. Amen. Hallelujah. Even if you don't have, you don't need money in your pocket. You don't need savings in your bank account. Faith is enough to take you places. Faith is your purchasing power. Hallelujah. To take you places. Amen. So we really want to appreciate him for coming this way. The reason I have to do a vote of things now, his service is unpredictable. Well, I might not also be able to speak after the service. And he says, all oh, those people I preach for them, they never appreciate it. But it's because of him, he would have caused it. So whilst I'm still normal, I'm still normal, let me appreciate him. Because you don't know what is going to happen. Amen. Brother, when you are dwelling in the atmosphere of the supernatural, anything can happen. Amen. So I just thought, well, let me just deal with whoever I need to thank. Let him thank him now. Otherwise, if you say at the end of the service, they might be failing to play. Amen. You don't know. Amen. Hallelujah. So we really also want to appreciate church. Uh, Pastor, please take our special thanks to Sister Shah. Your wife and your children, tell them we love them, we appreciate them. And next time when they come here, we want to make sure they, they can go wherever they want to. We also have capacity here. We have capacity to, to do things here. Amen. We, we, we move mountains here. So this is my domain. I'm not afraid to say that. Amen. Because it's, we can do it. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So whatever they want in the United Kingdom, it's there. It's done. You don't need to bother yourself going on booking.com, doing Airbnb. It's good to work with men with resources. Amen. They will just say, come and live in the full house. He's been living in a full house on his own. We say to him, you look, you can sleep in this bedroom if you don't want it. It's not fresh enough. You can move into that one. Five bedroom the house. He's been on his own. Amen. Because the resources are there. And we pray for God to give us more resources. We want more Joseph Aramathias in church. 
rich people. Amen. They go and speak to Sunak to say we want a stadium. I was passing through with the pastor through Silverstone where they go and watch cars just the going vroom, 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 vroom. I said pastor this stadium we could be hiring it for you. We can fill this stadium. Me in terms of inviting is not a problem. I can gather the people that one is a given. It's a given gathering people it's a given. But I need men like him. This man does not run out of fuel. You don't want someone who says, ah, let's go, we can go together. We, we can go together to Scotland. Northampton, he gets to Northampton, he tells you, ah, my fuel is run out. He said, but brother, you said we could go to Scotland. He says, ah, you know, I was expecting my pay today. Ah, you know, it didn't come. I was expecting my bank card. Ah, it didn't come through the post. Ah, we don't want such men. You want a man say, we are going to Scotland. We go all the way. Amen. So, Pastor, we, we, we thank you for accepting our invitation for next year. The Lord willing. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Pastor Mgwenya actually doesn't even know my mother. So, she, he was asking me, which one is your mother? So, I wanted to stand. I wanted to stand so that he, he, she can see. Amen. So I also want to appreciate him for the couples dinner. The couples that were out there at the couples meeting, stand up. Stand up. Amen. These people enjoyed yesterday. They were dressed beautifully. I saw Brother Kuda for the first time with a tie. I said, what? What's going on? I saw Brother Charles with a bow tie. I said... I said, we need to bring church to the couples meeting. These people were looking amazing. And they had a good time. God bless you. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. I just also want to appreciate the back sisters. They were the ones doing the sandwiches and so forth. You know, when we ask you to do something for lunch and so forth and you do it, we know the resources sometimes they can be limited. But that effort you have done, we appreciate it. And may the Lord bless all the sisters. Back sisters, stand up. Stand up the back sisters so that we can appreciate you for all you have done. God bless you. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. We also want to appreciate uh, 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 the choir. Wow. What an amazing Songs, songs that they were singing, beautiful songs. Amen. Oh, we want to appreciate Brother Buddha. Stand up, the choir master. Amen. Oh, we appreciate this man. He's very passionate. Passionate about the music. And I believe we Bucks is gonna go levels. Amen. Bucks haters, let me say when you are listening. What we are doing here is going to go places. What we are doing here is going to shake Buckinghamshire. I have a dream. I have a dream. And I see that dream coming to pass. I have a dream. Brother, if you can have the Sunday school did what they did. And it's the first Sunday school presentation. It's like we've been doing it for years. But pastor, it was the first Sunday school presentation. Sister Mimi, stand up. Sister, praise more. Keep up the good work. God bless these sisters. Keep up the good work. Hallelujah. Amen. We will like people that are dedicated. I like to work with the dedicated people, with the committed people, people that also don't ask too many questions. Brother, people that had to succeed, in the time of Solomon, Brother Branham says they had to rally behind the gift. So you identify the man, you identify he's got a gift, rally behind the vision. Amen. He's not going to make the ship sink. He knows where the ship is going. So we really want to thank everyone 
that have also bought into the vision of Parks Fellowship. We have a greater vision, church. And God has brought it to pass already. Amen. After these Easter meetings, brother, ah, I'm on levels now. Levels. Amen. Hallelujah. We also want to appreciate our musicians. Can our musicians stand up? Amen. Hallelujah. For all the beautiful work that you're doing, we really appreciate. Amen. All this you're doing. Amen. Brother Michael, he's, this man is one of the best, best guitarists in Zimbabwe. And he's starting to become the best guitarist in the United Kingdom. Very humble, very quiet, you won't know it, but he is. We have talent, and you, we also know you have talent within you, and we want to unlock it. Amen. God bless you, brothers. Amen. Hallelujah. And I had the lead. Is that a lead guitar? I, I love that thing. I had it going. Tindiri, tindiri, tindiri. I said, what? This thing is here. I've been missing it. Wow. And I had our brother here, uh, my perpetrator, playing the keyboard. I said, wow. Hey, does this thing play like this? Thank you so much. He's got his wife in the building, so I want them to stand both. Amen. I looked at him and he's very slim and so forth. So I thought he's a single brother. So I asked the sister, God bless you, sister. Who are you? She says, uh, uh, I'm sister, my paper. I said, which one? He says, the, my husband is the one playing. I said, what? I thought he's single. Yeah, you must declare your people. <laughs> Amen. So we really thank God for all this. And uh, what about the song leaders? <laughs> Brother Nyandoro, stand up. Amen. God bless you, Brother Makomba. Stand up. We appreciate you, Brother Bure. Stand up. We can. Up, we appreciate you, our Brother Evans. Stand up so that the people will see you. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. When you are starting to sing, oh yes, oh yes, I'm a child of the king, oh he's royal. I, I had the blood, I felt the blood, the, the royal blood. Ah, Satan, I'm coming after you. Hallelujah. Brother, I love good music. If there is something that I love in church, is this thing. Ah, me, I can just say service, let it end. But we cannot finish it without the word. But these things, they really usher people into the spirit. In the presence of God. Amen. So we really thank them and appreciate them. Amen. How many appreciate the technical team? Brother Charles. Brother Benjamin Cairo. Amen. These men, they are working behind the scenes, making things happen. You know, when we started Bugs Fellowship, we were just a few people. And I saw Brother Charles running around with equipment. Most of the equipment we are using, it's his own personal equipment. His own personal equipment. So I said... What is this man doing now? He's exposing us. We are just trying to start and he's already putting us on the internet. But what I didn't want is to discourage the man. He's so committed and dedicated. Amen. So God bless Brother Charles, Brother Benjamin Cairo, Sister Rhoda here on the coats and everything. God bless you. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory be to God. Amen. Brother, sister, for us to have set up this way, there are others that come early whilst you are still snoring. 
and they say let's bring equipment and let's set it up we have a team that has never failed us that team is always there pastor when we started we had to run around and do things but when this team came together I just come to the pulpit and everything is ripe and ready it's like we've been running for years we've only been running one year seven months or so or eight months or so but there's a team that come they dedicate themselves they come set up equipment set up the chairs and after that they unpack and pack everything they do it so that we can have successful meeting so i want the t uh, this setup team to stand up uh, brother uh, this is my older brother actually brother wisdom gondora here but he's the one that drives the instruments for the van. He's on time. He does it. He came to the message and he came wholeheartedly. Wholeheartedly. I was trying to fellowship with him at break time. I said, brother, my older brother, do you now see the vision? He said, I've always seen the vision. So I said, these are the men we need to work with. So, Brother Wisdom, stand up. Brother Benjamin, stand up. Brother Glory, stand up. Amen. These men, they come to set up all the time. They do everything that needs to be done for things to happen. God bless you. Uh, Pastor, you still remember? Brother Benjamin, stand up. You still remember? He's the one, the wife said that... My, 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 my husband is a millionaire, but he doesn't have the money yet. <laughs> the wife said that. So we have a millionaire in the house. Amen. I want to give you a spoken word name. Amen. From today is now called Brother Benjamin Sharit. Go and read about Brother Sharit. In the spoken word. Amen. We want such men. Amen. Also behind the scenes. We also have the deacon board. And the church officers. We were having meetings. For all these things to happen like this. Their support and dedication. We want to appreciate it. And if the deacons can stand up. Uh, they, are, they play a dual role. The deacons. And also their ministers. Brother Mohambi and Brother Valentine, if you can stand so that the church can see you. We really appreciate them. Amen. Brother Mohambi, committed people, firebrands of the gospel. Brother Valentine, the same. Amen. Sometimes now I, I can afford to go to holiday and the church still goes. Amen. Hallelujah. So we appreciate this man. I mean, Brother Oliver, did you stand up on the musicians? Stand up, Brother Oliver. He's our drama as well. We appreciate. Amen. All those that sang specials, we also want to appreciate you. Hop, stand up. Sister Mimi. Amen. Those that sang special, my wife sings special. Stand up. We also want to appreciate special singers, all oh, that sing specials. Oh, yes. <laughs> Sister Portia and my mom. <laughs> yes. And also there is my, mom, my mom's young sister. She was not in the message. But when she came here, she started fellowshipping, walking with us. She got baptized and... She started seeing it. She said, well, I did not see it in this light. When we were in Zimbabwe, we were trying to testify to her. She would not get it. But when she came here, she says, something was unlocked. I can see it. I like it when a man says, I can see it. She's the one that gave a special. Sister Rina, can you stand up? Amen. She's the one that sang the song here. We really want to appreciate. And I want to just appreciate every one of you. 
to make these meetings a success. Because if you were not here, these meetings would not have happened. If your presence was not here, then we wouldn't have been gathering like this. The scripture actually says where two or three are gathered. But we went beyond two and three. And we gathered even much more. So we appreciate you. Amen. I think I've dealt with everything that needs to be dealt with for now. And uh, we just want to give an opportunity to the men of God. But for me, the work is done. It's now just encouraging you how to keep on staying in the testimony. Keep that faith going. Keep that atmosphere of the supernatural. Amen. Hallelujah. So, Brother Evans, can you sing for us? Unfortunately, we will need to have left this place by 7 o'clock later. So the preacher has got about 45 minutes to an hour. I don't expect him to go an hour because I know the job is done. But as you are led, Pastor, we don't want to limit you as well. Maybe there are others that say, oh, we didn't get everything, but uh, you should have got everything. Amen. By now, you should have got everything. Amen. Now you are just going beyond the beyond to get some more for others. But as for you, you must be sorted. Amen. Brother, even sing us a song as we invite our pastor here to sing. The cloud of glory is moving. Move with the cloud. With the cloud, with the cloud of glory, please move, move in, move with the cloud. Move. Yeah, let your spirit around, let your strength come, let us move all together. and uh, we are happy as we take the last moments of the meetings. I know it's already done. The job is done. We just have to maximize and keep the victory and learn to use all the keys that we're taught so that you be, you, the later you shall thank this you for what you, you aim for and your future you that you are shaping shall thank you for the efforts you shall take to your destiny. I want to thank God for my friends um, and all of you who are here. Um, a man who has friends must show himself friendly. I really enjoyed my stay here. Let's open our Bible as we are about to close uh, to um, Proverbs chapter 18, verse 21. The Bible says, Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Let us pray, our Heavenly Father. We commit everything to your hands. Speak to your people, Lord, for in a unique way. Something that be imparted at the gap end of their soul. Something that will anchor itself as a knowledge of God and unwavering faith that will move mountains, 
that father in this service as you shall be making strong declarations of faith each one speaking into their mountain father speaking in the power of the spoken word in the power of the third pool father may they stay with that spoken word until it manifests and materializes i come down into your hands in jesus name amen right you may be seated i'll be moving very fast because i don't want to take much time so i will be speaking about harnessing and rechanneling the power of the spoken word there are powers around us that we have learned to harness like that centurion who says speak the word only just god speaking the word things were being sorted at home as we speak the word let things be sorted in your workplace in your marriage wherever you are let things start shaping up by the spoken word and that one each one of you has power to speak the word and start believing your declarations of faith you see, in this world, in science, we don't waste resources. When there is sun and other people are basking, others are saying, how can I get this power to, to light my stove? How can I? They put panels to harness and rechannel to the kitchen, rechannel to an electric device. When the wind is blowing and some people are saying it's windy, someone is saying, how can I use this power? When the sermon is blowing, when the quotations are blowing, Someone is saying, how can I use this sermon to sort my work issues? How can I use this message to sort my health issues? How can I use this message to sort my financial issues? So they don't waste anything in this world. Actually, even in where they are tight are waves, instead of them complaining about the waves, they learn how to generate power from the waves. So in the waves of the Holy Spirit, learn how to harness and rechannel them. I was seeing even where they are volcanics. Instead of them complaining about volcano, they are now using geothermal electricity generated from those eruptions. So we want to learn how to, to, to harness the power of the spoken word, harness the power of the anointing, harness the power of the atmosphere, the power of sincerity, the power of revelation, the power of prayer, the power of fasting, the power of the spoken word, the power of our ought to be condition we harness all those things the the sd cards the tabs the books harness everything that we have and use it to generate power in our lives so we see that even in an earthquake zone they've learned how to harness the seismic waves to generate electricity we saw sister it harnessing the super atmosphere to channel it and use it for the, for the salvation of the children. So don't just bask in the service. Harness the anointing and rechannel it and say, from the, the sunlight that was shining, now I can light my stove. From the waves that were passing, now I can light this. That is how to use a service. People must be, used, must be taught how to use a sermon. I once preached a message about how to use a sermon. You must learn how to use a sermon. And uh, now we see someone who harnessed that Aunt Jemima harnessed the power that could ground an aeroplane. She just spoke and said, where is my Elijah? She had not read a spoken word. She had not known whether really there is an Elijah. But something said, there must be an Elijah. And by her speaking, she didn't you know, even have Seal's book or Church Edge's book like you have. She just spoke and said, I am the Shunammite. Where is my Elijah? I was hearing the testimonies of uh, Sidney Jackson in South Africa that when people were going to the meetings of Prayer Branham, those who were crippled, those who were on stretchers, when they were in the bus stops looking for transport, they were becoming healed and throwing stretchers because where they were going, it was already radiating towards them, that power. So you are harnessing. You are not here to spectate and say, wow, I mean what, but harness when you see certain levels of operation, harness it. You must be able to harness the power of prayer. And harness the power. Like that one who says, if I touch the hem, something will generate power for my healing. And harness the power of expectation. And harness the power of the fivefold ministry. Harness the power of life. Like when we see horses, we have learned how to tie them and we ride on their moving. When they are moving, we are also moving with them. We, because we are saying this thing is power to move so i can't be left behind when it's moving so i have to harness it when the sermon is moving things don't be left behind connect and be able to move now 
let me just run this that the word is so powerful that it is a hammer it will crush every wall of partition in your life in jeremiah chapter 51 it says it is a bed to eggs it will cut the devil into pieces it is a lion when the lion roars every animal is affected it is a liquor instrument you can sue the devil using the word of god it is the slingshot David had the same answer for the bear, same answer for the lion, same answer for Goliath. Whatever you face in life, financial, spiritual, is the word of God. It will defeat Satan any time, any place, under any circumstance. The word of God is a sword that can tear the devil into ribbons. The word of God is the antivirus from evil thoughts and evil. The word of God is a mirror where you can stand and see yourself. It is the water to wash. The word of God is a trumpet of jubilee. When it sounds, your slavery is over. The word of God is a will. It is your possession. It is your inheritance. The word of God is an inexhaustible source. You can come for more and more and get more and more. The word of God is our city of refuge. When you hide there, you are safe. The word of God is a gateway to the supernatural. The word of God is a filter. It will filter your thoughts, your fashions, your friends, your dreams, your influences. The word of God is like the rock of Daniel. That hit all images of heathenisms and there is no place for them. Let it hit anything that is not well in your life. The word of God is like a seed. When you plant it, it will germinate. If you water it with the praise, the word of God is sweeter than honey. There is honey in the rock, my brother. The word of God is uh, enforceable rights, your redemption rights. The word of God is your fact, fact, fact checker. You can check everything with the word of God. The word of God is a key to open every door, whether it's door to salvation, whether it's door to your job. The word of God is a net that when we throw, it will win the fish. The word of God is a pill of great price, which when a man finds, he throws away every other thing. The word of God is creative power. When you speak, it creates an atmosphere. It creates what you want. The epistles are a pistol from the apostles. The word of God is like a shifting spanner. It will shift and attend marriage issues. It will shift and attend every health matter. The word of God is God in print form. The word of God is the logos, which is God himself. It is the rhema, which is the word of God for a situation. The word of God is meat to those who are mature and is milk to those who are, who are not yet mature. It's spiritual food in due season. The word of God, the gospels are the gospels. They will heal every sickness. The word of God is an arrow that will hit where your sickness is. The word of God is the bread of life, bread of heaven, feed me till I want no more. The word of God is the basis of our choice and our decision when you choose your dress when you choose your friend when you choose your job you use the word of god the word of god is a fountain and source of every need it's a fountain of every blessing the word of god is a way maker it will make a way the word of god is a lifestyle if you live by the word you are living in style the word of God is a garment, and the prophet says, if I can take the word of God, if you will crown my ministry by making me take the word of God and dress his pride, the word of God is power. The word of God is faith stimulator. Faith comes by hearing. As we hear the word of God, something comes into your heart, and you say, yes, this is mine, this is my destiny. The word of God is a mountain mover. Every mountain shall move. The word of God is a blueprint for your life. You have to build according to the blueprint. The word of God is a map. It will direct you. It is a compass. It is the highway court. The word of God is a love letter. See yourself and read between the lines. The word of God is a grinding stone to grind every devil. The word of God is an answer book to give you every answer in your life. The word of God is a rock a, of, uh, and other ground is sinking sand. The word of God is a hiding place. Jehovah hide me, I am under the rock. The word of God is the absolute, it is the ultimate, it is the tie post. The word of God is a lifeline. The word of God is the, word of, is, is the water of life. If you are thirsting for something, the word of God will supply it. The word of God is a bandage for every emotional scar and emotional wound. The word of God is the urim and thamim, the spoken word and the Bible. 
The word of God is a lamp to your feet. The word of God is your protection like the hedge that was in Job. The word of God is a chain that binds every devil. The word of God is our strength. The word of God is the power that swallows all other powers. The word of God is the best weapon that there is. The word of God is the balm in Gilead. It will heal every wound. It will bring every answer. The word of God is more precious than gold. I would rather have Jesus than all the silver and gold. The word of God is a solid foundation. Where when you stand, you cannot be shaken. The word of God is the ark where you can enter in yourself. The word of God is a joy producer. The word, the word of God is an inhaler. It is inspired. It will just sanitize your system. That's why in the, you know, in, in, in the beginning, when the, way, when the world was void without form, when things were shapeless, then there was chaos, and there was darkness upon the face of that deep, God spoke and said, let there be. And there was. When things are chaotic in your life, speak the word, don't complain, don't start murmuring, speak the word, and things will shape up. In Revelation chapter 12, it says, they overcame by the blood of the Lamb, and by the words of their testimony if you testify that you are healed you shall be healed if you testify that it's over then it shall be over because your testimony is power you are kings you are priests you must testify there is the power of the tongue when you speak harsh words uh, don't use words against people wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities and rulers of darkness if your tongue is loose the Holy Ghost cannot seal you. If you are loose about this, loose about that, if you have a loose tongue, things will be bad in your life. You must master the power of the tongue. Now, uh, the frogs catch their prey through the tongue. And there are other people who catch their prey through the tongue. Dogs control their temperature through the tongue. There are some people when they have temper and the temper is high, they want to speak. And, uh, but you must turn the tongue and speak right things that produce a right result in right atmosphere. The Bible says that uh, some people's tongues have venom and poison. It says the tongue devices mischief. It's like a sharp razor. That is Psalms 52 verse 2. And it says again in Psalms uh, 12 verse 15, uh, 18 that they, they speak like swords. Don't be careless with your words. Some people take time to heal from your comment. They take time to heal from your reaction. So, words are powerful. Some people speak uh, and, uh, and drain other people's strength until spirit leaves you when they speak. But I want to speak and energize you and tell you that you can make it. I want to torment the devil with the words. The, uh, you tell the devil that I'm already healed. I'm already loved. I'm already courageous. There is power of words. The, actually, the Bible says, by your words, you'll be justified. And by your words, you'll be condemned. So eternal life and creative power is in the spoken word. That is the essence of that third pool. When you speak the word, it will materialize. When God says, a virgin shall conceive, it took a long time, but one day it happens. And the vision shall speak what you have believed. One day you shall step into it. The word became flesh. And the prophet says that if you receive it spiritually in your heart and believe it, it will materialize and bring the results. Your job will materialize. Your answer will materialize. In James 3 verse 6, it says, The tongue is a fire. It is a world of iniquity. So the tongue among our members, it defiled the whole body. It set the fire. So we must control our tongue. Never speak something negative. One time the pastor kept asking me, how is the family? I said, this family is fine. But when I landed, a close, one of my closest people in my family was admitted and we paid an expensive hospital and I almost flew back home. But I have not told him. I said, everything is fine because I knew there was a better. I speak now because they are okay. But I don't say anything. We kept saying, how is your family? Fine. Because I didn't want to speak negative things. I've seen that if you master your words, you can get to dimensions. That's how I defeated that sickness. Now, um, every kind of beast and every bird, serpents can be tamed. But if we learn to tame the tongue and to put bread to, to say, I want this tongue to take me to my home, that it shall speak my home. 
I want this tongue to speak my salvation of my children. I want this tongue. You put bread who's on it. Don't be loose. If any man seems to be religious, but bread would not his tongue, his religion is in vain. Don't be loose about your talk. That's why even in the qualifications of ministers, it says a deacon must not be double-tongued. Uh, you must not speak this way to this one and the, to the other one. And he says, don't let corrupt communication proceed from your mouth, but that which edifieth. Be sure you test your words before you even speak them. Because whosoever desires and loves life to see good things, let him keep his tongue from evil. You must always be connected when you are speaking. Because the Bible actually says that from the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. If there is full of nonsense here, you will speak nonsense. But any man out of the good treasure of his heart, he speaks good things. For you to speak the word, you must eat the word. You must have the word. So that when you speak, it is the word. A word is a thought expressed. But not every word is a thought expressed. When you are speaking in tongues, it's not your thoughts, it's God's thoughts expressed. When you are prophesying, it's not your thoughts, you have not thought about it, it's God's thoughts expressing in you. When you are, when you are speaking under the anointing, it's not via your thoughts, it's via his thoughts. So there are some thoughts of heaven that are spoke by you without you thinking of it. Let me just show you shortly uh, how some people spoke badly ripped badly so that i can then show you how you can speak and rip good things there was john lennon of the sing of the Beatles. he mentioned that we are more famous than jesus and he didn't even uh, live much he was shot six times there was this brazilian president who says if i get five hundred thousand votes uh, not even god will remove me from presidents uh, he got the votes but he, he was sick and died before he was made president there was a man who built the Titanic. He just spoke and says, not even God can sink it. And because of the bad tongue, he actually sank. Maybe it was not going to sink. There is this guy there who, who was a singer who, who, who just uh, puffed the cigarette and said, this is for you, God. He died with lung cancer at a young age. There was uh, these kids, Brazilians, who were going in a journey, and their mother said, Go with God, my children. They said there is no space for God. Maybe in the trunk, in the boot. So they had a crate of eggs in the boot there. And God went there. When there was a collision, the eggs were saved because that's where God was. So sometimes you think you are not moving. But what is stopping you from getting to heights is your mouth. What you are saying about servants of God. What you are saying about this. You cannot drink coffee talking about pastors and then in the spirit claim things because God says God demands respect for his children if you don't respect the man respect the office because I, he says I've heard people talk about the, their pastors and ridicule him how will he do anything for you there's a man where problem went and then he says I don't want to hold roller religion here in my garage and all of a sudden, that same day, that same afternoon, his own, uh, is it nephew, um, his son-in-law, uh, mistakenly drove, it killed him with a truck. So, but we who are Christians, no weapon formed against us shall prosper. And every tongue that rises against you in judgment, you shall condemn it. There is a man who was an atheist who says, make a portrait of me standing on the Bible. Then he says, if I'm wrong, let there be snakes that will come in my grave when I die. While they were burying him, three snakes were there, and even they say up to now, snakes are always in that place. Kind words are like honey. They are sweet. They are healthy. Actually, uh, they give strength to the body. If you are a son of God, you just speak the word, and it will create itself. Don't ever let your testimony be negative. That woman said, it is well when things were not well. That's why you never hear us talking about our problems. We, the, our problems are under us. Every test becomes a testimony. Jesus said, it is finished. Meaning every drop of the blood of Jesus is an answer to every situation that you face. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 13, 
Having the spirit of faith, according as it is written, I have believed, therefore have I spoken. If you believe something, speak about it. Don't be ashamed to speak before it happens. Don't be afraid to declare it. You are prophesying that it will happen. The word is nigh thee, even in your mouth. So speak the word over your children. Start speaking your victory. And say it's going to be well. I'm going to overcome. I'm going to make it. I'm going to be used of God. I'm going to receive the Holy Ghost. I'm going to, this thing will pass away. I don't want these mountains. You start speaking your financial victory. You start speaking God's word. You start speaking your miracle. Your miracle is in your mouth. A closed mouth is a closed destiny. You must speak until it happens. Speak the word over your family for salvation. Declare the word over yourself. Declare over your life. Speak your financial future. Speak that I'm going to reach levels in the spirit. Open your mouth and speak the word of God over your circumstances. While Peter yet spake, they were filled with the Holy Ghost. I was enjoying with my brother there in fellowship. He's there. He's um, related to my other friend, brother Nyengera. In, I went when his brother was in ICU at Impilo. He's nothing. his head there. I went to theater. He was in troops. He was unconscious. So I stepped in theater and I spoke to him that, brother, I want you out. Let's go outside. I spoke. I knew he, he was not hearing. He was unconscious. But spiritual, I said, you are hearing my voice. So when I left there, I went to the, uh, there was a funeral of Pastor Chikos, Maxwell Chikos. While I was about to preach in the funeral, I heard that someone is looking for you. Then I went just before preaching and I find this his brother is outside saying, ah, you took me out. I'm out now. So we are speaking. Taking you out of poverty. Taking you out of your situation. If you declare, this scripture I declared when I was in COVID, brother uh, Gerard, I said, I shall not die, but I shall live and declare the works of God. That's why I'm declaring the works now. Pastor Shinde phoned me at that time and says, Doc, if you die, how shall we answer people? Do something. I said, what? I'm sick. I'm... He says, no, no. You, what, you, you are a man of faith. You would discourage many people if you die. If you die, you have cost us. <laughs> I, I said, now what? He says, there's a spirit in a man that sustains this infirmity. I stood and said, Lord, I shall not die. I shall live. All of a sudden, Pastor Kumiso phoned and says, Doc, receive your healing. At 2 a.m., a man came in the room. I've always introduced people to that man when I'm ministering to other people. But now I needed him myself. My uh, doc, the, the CR reactive protein, uh, it dropped from 7%, you know. The physician was amazed. The things that changed overnight. I removed my oxygen. I was now connected. So if you speak the word over your situation, watch him work on your behalf. I was talking to my other sister who is here. I was going to preach in Pumula somewhere in Pulawai. She phoned me and said, I can't seem to get my practice number. Where is she? Uh, I, I then said, sister, get your practice number. A few days from there, she says, now I have my practice number against all odds. God is ways of doing the impossible. There is nothing more dangerous to the kingdom of darkness than a believer with the word of God in his mouth. It's not certain class of people anointed, people gifted, people. Each one of you is gifted. Each one of you can do exploits. When your faith speaks, Diseases are silenced. Actually, a believer is omnipotent. So a man fully surrendered to God is omnipotent. Whatsoever you say and you don't doubt in your heart, it shall come to pass. What happens when two omnipotents meet, when God and man together through omnipotence, something is going to shake. So it creates a power that goes yonder and brings things to pass. Things that are not, it makes them though as they, they are. So if you magnify, God says he has magnified his word above his name. God's word is actually above his name. 
he said that in Psalms 138, but he had to reconcile it in Revelation by saying his name is the word of God. <laughs> so it's the same thing, right? Because his name is called the word of God. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their sicknesses. My first car, Pastor Kumiso just came and says, don't worry about your salary. When do you want that car? I said, ah, any time now. I left the meetings at Polytech, Bulawayo. On Monday, someone came and said, for, if you do this for our family, you get this car. So already by Tuesday, I had the pictures of the car. And the code of the Bible comes out of the pages of the Bible. The word of God is the final say in our lives. I, Padam Chengeti sent me these pictures when his crops were, were drying. His farm is just near my farm. It's just near my farm. It was so dry at that time. Then we spoke the word. We said the quotations say, a brother will say, I give you rain, and the rain will come. I actually ate those corpse there. there is, it's never too late for God. The word of God moves elements. It says in the book of Job that you shall decree a thing, and it shall be established for you. And the light will shine in your path. Today, no, I will never pray for anyone, but I want everyone to speak. Everyone to declare what they want. Make powerful declarations of faith. Don't worry about the how question. You may not know how, you may not know when, but God knows how to make it happen. When Ezekiel went to the valley of dry bones, he found a dry situation, negative after negative. Bones were so disjointed. They were so dusty. They were so cold. They were so hopeless. They were so many. They were so far apart. And it was a valley. And God asked him, can these bones, what are you saying about your situation? Then when he started saying, oh you dry bones, oh you dry finances, oh you dry youths, oh you dry marriage situations, hear the word of the Lord. Behold, there was a shaking. Your situation is waiting for you to declare what should happen. So things started joining and uh, each bone knew its place. When you speak the word, God will move every piece to his place. When you speak the word, no piece will be misplaced. When you speak the word, God knows there is an unseen hand that moves the pieces around. When you speak to your mountain, that mountain, speak with authority. Do not triumph over me. Be thou removed. Tell your situation, do not triumph over me. Speak with authority, don't doubt. Devils can sense when you have no authority. You can, you can bind the severest and the worst. You can bind the mamba. When I gave the testimony about my mother's, uh, we had a sister of the brain and it disappeared. Sister Mercy Mrerwa from Pastor Mrerwa heard that testimony and she was due for an operation. I prayed for her in Belvedere and I said, receive your healing. She waited for me outside and says, person, are you now meaning that I should not go for operation? I said, no, no, um, let's pray about it. So I went home. She took a flight and came with trade fair meetings at that time. She, I prayed for her and she says, person, I want to know whether I don't need an operation anymore. I said, no, let's wait on the Lord. She says, no, then let's pray again. She was so stubborn in faith. So while we were praying, we heard God saying, it's over. And I declared, no more operation. She went and took the CT scan that is written there. The findings were written, we can't see that thing anymore. We have real, we have a cloud of witnesses. You can speak like Job and say, I know my Redeemer liveth. You can speak like Caleb and say, we are more than able. You can speak like Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego and say, our God is able. You can speak like the Shunammite, eh, 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 like that uh, Andy Chemama and say, I am the Shunammite. You can speak like the Shunammite and say, it is well when things are not well. You can tell the devil like that one who took a prayer cloth, who was on a wheelchair, and say, Mr. Dev, we are finished. You will find that your situation hears your voice. If the tribe was hurt, if mountains hear, if the storms hear, your situation hears your voice. The prophet says there will be a power that will be put in the church and now it's coming in that God will so annoy people until they will speak the word and it will create itself right there. 
We haven't seen such powers like that come into the church, but now it's coming in the same power that stopped this, the Red Sea, that opened the Red Sea, the same power that stopped the sun. Joshua did not need to calculate the distance between the sun and, the, and all that. He says, sun stands still. And the word, it obeyed him. When Mary says, be it unto me, according to the saying of the servant of God, she became pregnant right there. I have believed, therefore have I spoken. God said so, I believe it, that said was it. In the message, speak to this mountain. In paragraph 68, the prophet was preaching, saying, you on the wheelchair there, if you believe, God can heal you. By paragraph 71, the man was carrying his wheelchair. It was no longer carrying him. So, Brother Marvin was saying, and um, this sister that is waiting in this video, was, it was in COVID time. And she was 54 years. She says, God cannot fail me. I want to be a wife. And it's never too late. She heard the testimony of Sister Precious and says, mine is coming. Your testimony also shall come. I enjoyed in the Puera meetings when I had this sister who had some tumors in the, in the womb. Then she closed herself with the, chair, with the tap. Why cry speak? And she was not crying. She was speaking the whole night. And tumors started falling on their own. They could not follow the realm of faith that she had lifted to. When we were having an all night prayer meeting, uh, recently at City Tepanegu, Brother Mojo's car was stolen. Then he wrote on the group, not for sympathy. He says, today I'll be driving my car. By 10 a.m., the thief came and parked the car near church there. When you speak something, know that ye are gods. The dominion that was with Adam is with you. You are able to speak and things shall materialize. Now, when we went to the farm, there was a barren cow and we prayed for it and it got twins. I went again, there was a dying cow. It was actually dying. They said it's, it's hot water or whatever. So we prayed. When we laid hands, my boys were there. It jumped and ran. It's still alive even now. <laughs> that woman said, if I touch the hem of the garment, I'll be okay. He says, this is my covenant to you. You speak the word and I will perform it. It's not your part to perform. Your part is to speak. Praising God confuses the enemy. You have a, you have a ten pin plug. That when you raise your ten fingers, you, you are plugging to the supernatural. And those words will manifest. Sister had to say, this is nothing but the truth. And she initiated the third pool in human beings. Brother Stovel there received his 12 children. Two of them were not yet born. But he spoke them. Sister Stovel received her whole family through that pool. So God can move your mountains. God can make the impossible possible. You know, in the rapture, God won't go to every grave. Rise up in the name of Jesus. Rise up. You will speak like an archangel, the voice, with a shout. And your situation, your grave will open. That's why he says, if you can say to the sycamore tree, be plucked by roots. Let your problem be plucked by root until it will never come back again. When he said that in Matthew chapter 21, when he said he cursed the fig tree, this fig tree had no excuse. It was not a season, but remember the rod of Aaron was worse. It was disconnected, but when he saw the master, it parted and it had fruits. So this fig tree was not supposed to, to figure it out. It was supposed to have fig, which is faith in God. So they said, straight away, it is with that. So when Brother Branham met the Colorado storm, he was told, speak to your storm. You have power to speak to your storms. When the third pool operated, he even spoke to the fish and said, I give you your life. No, these are not decorative quotations. This is to empower you to be a powerhouse yourself. When Moses and Elijah would speak the word, fire would come out to consume their situation. Jonah said, those that observe lying vanities, they forsake their mercy. Don't worry about negative things. God will overcome those things. 
I spoke the testimony about Sister Precious who said when she was 47 years old, came with a shirt and said, this is not the shirt, but uh, she says, uh, um, I want the man who shall be my husband shall fit here. I was with Pastor Zita. And we got so drunk, I said, within two weeks, there is a brother that is coming. I don't have those brothers, but God has them. And Pastor Matanga got a dream and he saw uh, the bride who was ready, who was ready but there was no husband there. And God says, remove your overalls, put on a suit, run. And then he checked and found the sister precious. And they are married now. My first surgery, I declared in 2006, and said, that place shall be my surgery. I had no man, I only got it in 2011, but the owner says, no one ever used it since we declared. Now, you are getting into a season of uncommon testimonies. Testimonies too good to be true. Astounding testimonies. Why the devil is fighting your testimony? It's like every barren woman in the Bible, it was because the devil was fearing what is coming. Because Sarah, it was a prophet Isaac. Rebecca, it was prophet Jacob. With Rachel, it was prophet Joseph. With the Hannah, it was prophet Samuel. With Elizabeth, it was prophet Joe. It was prophets. The devil was fearing. You are getting into various categories of testimonies. Testimonies of grace. Testimonies of answered prayers. Testimonies of breakthroughs. Testimonies of spiritual warfare and victory. Testimonies of deliverance. Testimonies of personal uh, salvation. Testimonies of the dead pool testimonies of blessings, testimonies of supernatural experiences, testimonies of uh, supernatural provision, testimonies of divine protection, testimonies of uh, creative power where you speak and things materialize, testimonies of transformed life, testimonies of revival, testimonies of divine healing, and your life will go the direction of your words. What you say about yourself is what shall happen there shall be a manifestation of the written word and spoken word. One time I was preaching at the convention, this sister from Masringo, had a child who had a spinal problem. And when I said, speak to your mountain, she left the service, went home, and said, this is my mountain. The situation of my child is my mountain. And when the pastor was no longer there to lay hands, she says, my child, you are going to sit today. And the child said, and she trusted the miracle that she demonstrated in front of the people. <laughs> and the child said he was not going to betray them. Actually, this service ended with a celebration when people were celebrating what was happening. Now, there is a family in, in Zambia that sent me a message. You see, this is a specialist doctor, PhD doctor, who determined that this child is a, a hydrocephalus, PhD pediatrician. So we prayed. I just sent a message. I said, let's pray. God is going to do something. So we prayed. When the child was born, no hydrocephalus. You can shape your destiny by the word of God. I want to teach you how to position yourself to receive from God by harnessing the power of the spoken word. When you have a problem, don't go to the phone. Go to the throne. And every miracle in the Bible started as a problem. There is nothing too expensive that God's favor cannot buy for you. Why I'm giving testimonies is because a testimony will give birth to another testimony. Wherever you are, whoever you are, don't limit God. Your answer is older than your problem. Before you were in that situation, God saw you making it. The power is in you. The word is nigh thee to speak like Jabez who says, Lord, I don't want to say poverty. I don't want to uh, spare me from trouble that it should not. He was born in sorrow, but he says, Lord, enlarge my territory. There is room for expansion. Pray until God changes your situation. Pray until you move from the valley to breakthrough. Move until you get to your breakthrough and define all trends. If certain cycles are happening in your family, you have the power to say, Not with me, not with my children. It stops here, those dreams, those attacks. And you say, we are, I'm not going to be followed by diabetes. I'm not going to be followed by cancers. But surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. When you speak like that, 
God knows how to answer you. God knows how to make it good in his time. God, there is a sister in our church. When she came, she was not a sister. She was not in the message. She came in January last, the other year, and said, I've been barren for eight years. Can you pray for me? So we went to the back room. It was me, Sharon, and Shiloh. And yeah. So while we were praying, the word of God, the rema, for her situation came. And I said, sister, before this year ends, you'll be carrying a child. I don't care about the eight years you are talking about, but starting from now, you are going to be pregnant and you're going to come with your child. I spoke in January when we had a cross overnight. She came and gave her life to Christ carrying the child. Spoken word power. When I went to America there, it was tourism, but it was kutora. I was tour tourism, touring. <laughs> so I went to same at this clinic. I said, we are in the medical together. If you go to this clinic, mysteriously, I'm getting my clinic. So I stood there in July at same at this clinic. And I said, I'm extracting it to Pulawai. So by August 2018, which is just two or so months, well, it was uh, August, yes, it was a month or so when we landed, we saw a clinic that was being sold and we declared that we are buying it. And we discovered that these people have another house. Now you know it has number 50 up at Chitepo. We said we also want it. Everything was going to be about 500,000. <laughs> we said we want it. I told my wife that let's buy it. Now, my wife almost withdrew from this transaction because I was going thin, money was not coming. But I said, I've spoken. I've never withdrawn. So when it happened, because she stood with me, I gave her this clinic. So when I was coming here, I dealt with the neighbor, uh, the, our neighbor here, and we are now buying the neighbor, the neighbor to our clinic. I said to a child of God, there's always exploits. Don't have mediocrity. We are preaching and demonstrating to you that there is a level that you must be so high in the things of God and it pays. I was preaching in Rusapi. I'm, I'm closing now in five or so minutes. And there's a sister who had ulcers for three years. She heard about the testimonies of ulcers from Highlands. This is her whole story. She says, I'm healed. But it did not come like that. She went home, it was still painful. She says, I'm healed. And it, it was painful. She says, I'm healed. Like Papa with Amibas took the beans and said, I'm healed. And told the beans, stay there. You don't come out. And then yet, yeah, healing became permanent. Like that. I wanted a certain church stands. Now we have about 20 church stands. More than 40 churches, I can say. We have 20 church stands where we have to be building. So I wanted a change a chest stand in Pumula South. So I went to see the owner of the stand. And I said, I want this. He says, I'm not selling it. He refused all our money in our offers and says, No, this is mine. But I wanted it. And I went to step there and say, This shall be ours. Honestly, there came a time because that was 2010. I thought we lost it. When you have said something, keep expecting it. You don't know how it will come. So 2016, 2017. This owner of the stand came and he had a dream. God visited him and said, give my servant that stand, don't take any cent. And also, you as a pastor, go and give yourself to be under his ministry. So I got the stand and the man, but he refused with his stand when I wanted to buy it. He came and says, without money, just, I said, look, because you have said without money, I said, brother Hilary, just give him 3,000 US to say, go and farm. Though God says we should not give, I said, no, but we are allowed to just say, take something and be happy also. <laughs> My sister was there at the all night prayer meeting in Peria. That's the one, this one who is testifying, where I said, you shall receive a car, and your husband shall be a believer, and you shall have another child. That's the testimony she was giving. When I was preaching in Pumla 2012, sister, I had a cancer of the cervix. She still has healed now. She was booked by Dr. Soloayo, who is my friend, who is, we call each other relatives, you know, uh, for operation. But because Sunday came just before the operation, we broke the operation day. She was surgical prayer operated here. Now, you never know. 
God is a way of answering you. The God is more than a thousand ways of answering you. And he's going to give you your heart's desire in a very miraculous way. There's another sister called Sister Mfundis. I, I think that's my last testimony. My time is up. I don't want to stretch. Other things are done. But we're going to all make our declarations and close with a thunderous declarations of faith. That one doesn't need me. It needs you speaking. You know, to go have that step on faith, then you shall be telling us that Mfundis, we have gone past the levels we are trying to demonstrate. The warriors of David did better than David. Elisha did better than Elijah. Christ says, greater work shall you do. Joshua had to do higher than Moses. We should see, Babam says, watch the dead pool. What you have seen temporarily, you shall see more. I expect you to financially do better than us. Because we have taught you, we have equipped you. Don't come here to suffer. When you suffered at home and suffer here, I say no. Speak the word and step into your destiny. Be John Sharis, be property owners, be people who are in control by the power of the tongue. Our God is able. So that sister wanted to have a husband. She wanted to be married. So I went to the back room with her sister. When I laid hands on her, a stab on demon manifested and said, This one will never be married. Now I have more than 10 of those that were said they will never be married. They are married now. So, says, no, when, when she was in Zambia, we gave her a jacket. When she was feeling cold and we initiated her into things, she's not going to be married. I said, Satan, go. The devil went. As soon as we cast that devil on Sunday, there's a brother who was busy on here on Tuesday saying, is she free? Is she, is she, was, she was free now. <laughs> she was free now. And they quickly got married because some of you, there are people who are looking for you. They can't see you because of the bondage. We have to break that bondage. And then they will say, Ah, sister, have you always been here? They, they, you, yes, you are there. But from now, you shall be more visible. God bless you. Person, can you come? Oh my, my, my. Death and life, they are in the power of the tongue. How is so true? I was just fellowshipping with my second mother, sister Portia here, just before service. She said to me, God has never failed me. Everything I've ever wanted in my life, I've only said, Lord, I want that house. I want that car. I need this building. I need this church. Brother, sister, it's not difficult to speak. That's why you find that when a baby is born, the easiest thing the baby does is to cry. Amen. But we don't need to cry. Because we've had the prophet come and preach the message. Why cry? Speak. So you just need to speak. And it happens. Amen. Don't testify negative. Never have a te negative testimony. Amen. Always be positive. My wife, she's the best wife in the entire world. Amen. Hallelujah. Always say good. She's the best cook. Even if she's not the best cook, brother, she will be the best cook. Amen. Because you're always testifying it. But when you are speaking negative, be rest assured, you will see negativity. But brother, sister, I want this church to speak positive. Speak to positive. If you cannot speak positive, then shut up your mouth. But brother, sister, you need to speak positive all the time. Amen. The Bible says, let the weak say I'm strong. Amen. You must say I'm strong. Even if you're weak, you are strong. Let the poor say I'm rich. You that don't have houses, you must say I am a landlord. I am a landlord. Not just landlord, but we want also landladies. Amen. Hallelujah. Brother, sister, we want property owners. Not this business of renting a room. 
a room and you are hearing what's happening next door a baby cries and he says ah hey you must have your bedroom and your wife far away from all the disturbances amen not this business where somebody next door will just say goo, 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 goo. you are making too much noise ah uh, ah uh, i don't worship such a god amen brother we have been charged up i'm waiting for testimonies don't look at your circumstances don't look at your situation that's not who you are you are a child of god brother all the declarations that have been made about you they are true amen and it shall be what has been said it shall be amen we are coming to your wedding this year this year this year shall be your wedding day yeah this year we want to attend to weddings hallelujah this year not next year this year amen the venue is already there amen you sisters that are single i want you to start and going to look for gowns you that want a second baby go and buy some baby clothes now you you can also just be in advance you can pass the gown stage and start buying baby clothes just to tell the devil that i'm ahead of you amen brother you need to challenge the devil brother sister the way i am charged i'm going to go and buy the whole of milton kings i'll be driving in in the whole town and say lord this is mine that's mine that's mine house is pastor i'll be saying this is mine that church building is ours that stadium is ours all things are possible all things not some things but all things are possible to them that believe we are believers oh we are believers amen we don't want to hear you cry no the days of crying are over the days of crying are over i'll tell your wife daddy mommy the days of crying are over tell your husband daddy the days of crying are over brother in the house of god that's where you get your houses that's where you get your jobs amen things are conquered here in the spiritual realms then they manifest in the third dimension amen conquer it in the spiritual and win it in the natural we really want to appreciate her our pastor here oh that's not enough clip offering stand up and appreciate him amen i want all of us to say god bless you pastor Nguenya. amen now what we are going to do we are about to close right now but we have prayed for all the things that we want but I want to take this opportunity just to pray for Pastor Nguyen. Because you know, when you have dealt with demons, he doesn't have it easy. All the declarations that you've been waiting, the devil will be waiting somewhere to say you have been challenging me. You let those people go. They were my people. So where do we go then? They won't come and attack him. They know he's a strong man. But they will try and attack other things that he has. So we are not going to allow him to do that. So what we are going to do now, I want every one of you to pray for him. He's traveling back tomorrow. Amen. So we just want to pray for him and say, Pastor, we thank you and appreciate you 
may god be with you may god give you journey mercies may god lead you into greater heights all the things he's also ever desired we give it to him in the name of jesus christ let's bow our heads for a word of prayer dear heavenly father we want to thank you lord jesus for your servant oh lord how he yielded himself to the holy spirit and Lord Heavenly Father, you've used him, oh God, during these Easter meetings, oh God. Father, I pray that, Lord, may you restore the virgin. Lord, we pray for him and his wife and his children and his businesses, his surgeries, his farms, his churches. Lord, Heavenly Father, we pray for them, Lord. May you bless him, oh God. May you give him divine protection. Lord, Heavenly Father, may you prosper him. Continue to enlarge his ministry. Continue, oh God, to bless him more abundantly. Father, may you protect his children. May you protect his wife. May you protect everything that he has. Lord, may you guide him, Lord Jesus. Father, Lord God Almighty, we thank you, Lord, for sending him our way. We thank you, Lord, for he has yielded himself and got off the way. And Lord, we have been thoroughly blessed. And Lord, we are now blessing him, Lord. Father, may you bless him, Lord, more abundantly, Lord. May you give, may you give him, Lord Jesus, more than he is expecting. Lord Heavenly Father, when he arrives home, may he get there and there are blessings waiting for him. Father Lord God Almighty, we thank you Lord Jesus. Father, may you bless his church. May you bless all his outreaches. May you bless, oh God, all the 46 churches. And may you give him some more. Father Lord God Almighty, may you write many miracles through his hands may you write many miracles through his declarations Lord Heavenly Father I pray oh God may you take his ministry even unto another dimension Lord Heavenly Father you can do it Father Lord God Almighty we thank you Lord Jesus for what you have done for us what favor you have done for us even for these Easter meetings Lord it's been the face of those Lord but Lord God Almighty we can see Lord Jesus what you are doing in our midst Lord Heavenly Father no doubt these people they have been tremendously blessed Lord Heavenly Father may you bless their efforts may you bless all they've done may you bless them oh God for they've come into your presence Lord Heavenly Father we thank you Lord Jesus Father even as we wrap up these meetings even as we go to our homes Lord Heavenly Father may the same atmosphere may it stay upon us oh God Lord Heavenly Father may that supernatural anointing remain on us oh God may that angel of the Lord be with us oh God throughout Father we thank you Lord as you have ushered us into another season oh Lord we know it's a new season it's a new day a fresh anointing is upon us oh God Father Lord we glorify your name we praise your name on high oh lord jesus oh lord we thank you and appreciate you father we love you oh god for what you did for us father may we continue to bathe in our prayer bathe in your presence father we thank you lord we glorify your name in jesus name we pray all the church shall say amen but I even give us just one worship song <coughs> just one one worship song and after the worship song <coughs> we want a victory song so that the people can go on rejoicing but we want to make sure that the brothers please stay behind to fold the chairs everyone we need you to tidy up and do something we need to leave this place clean in 25 minutes so we have five minutes for a worship song and victory song 
God bless you. Say to your neighbor, God bless you. Happy Easter. Amen. Hallelujah. God bless you. In moments like this, I sing out a song. I sing out a song unto Jesus. In moments like this, I sing out a song. I sing a song unto Singing a love A love